Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sharpway Show. I am so happy that you are here with me this evening. Yes, 7 p.m. on the East Coast. Got to be looking at me. I know many of you are on the East Coast. Some of you aren't. No worries. But whatever you are, wherever you are, please always like, comment, share. I know I bug you every time. I'm not going to stop. Click those likes and those hearts and those, I don't care, dislikes, whatever. Click something. Get those algorithms moving so that we can move forward. And one thing I am going to ask you, if you can, do me a favor, subscribe to the YouTube page. It does matter. The YouTube page, the sharp way is important. Please subscribe in case they throw me off of uh, Facebook because I'm about to go down a road this evening that may get me thrown off. So I'm just saying I, I may be in trouble this evening. Hopefully you will be able to support me in case I get canceled. I hope I don't. But I'm walking down another road that I have been walking down many times. And that is the road that that is about the idea of race in America, right? That's an issue. I know it's an issue in America. I know it is. We see it all the time happening more and more and more. And we're making race about so much. I think that we're going too far. I think we are. And some of you are going to be upset at me. Larry, race is an issue. It is. Absolutely. It is an issue. But I think we're doing it. We need to do it in a way that makes sense. And I'm bringing this up because DC, Michael Smirconish had an interesting show uh, and he talked about, he actually showed the individual from New York who was mad about this DC issue. And let me go through this. I want you to give me your opinions. I'm going to give you mine. I, I think what's happening here is a serious problem that's making things worse. That's where I'll go. It's, ma it's not making things better. It's making things worse. Drama unfolded on the House floor on Thursday over the push for D.C. statehood. House Democrats voted to make portions of Washington, D.C. the 51st U.S. state. Yep. It would give the district's 700,000 residents something they've never had, a voting member of Congress and representation in the U.S. Senate. And this is a valid piece right there. I get people being upset about um, D.C. being a state. I get it. There is an important piece here that is true, which is they haven't had representation in the in Congress forever. That's an issue. Republican opposition ensures the proposal probably dead on arrival in the Senate, mm -hmm. perhaps because two senators elected from D.C. would almost surely be Democrats. The Absolutely. House devolved into heated arguments after Democratic Congressman Mondaire Jones condemned objections to D.C. statehood as yep. racist. He took aim in particular at two remarks, one from Republican Senator Tom Cotton, yep. who said that granting statehood would prevent D.C. from becoming a, quote, well-rounded working class state. Well, Tom Cotton is a jerk, so that's true. So getting mad at him is fine, but it doesn't mean he's racist. I mean, Tom Cotton probably is, but I'm just saying it doesn't mean he is. And another from Congressman Jody Heiss, who griped that the district doesn't have a number of factors, including landfills. Mr. Speaker, I have had enough of my colleagues racist insinuations that somehow the people of Washington DC are incapable or even unworthy of our democracy. Now that's not what they were saying at all. This guy is making things worse. This guy is from my state, Mondaire Jones, he's Democrat, and I get he wants DC to be a state. I understand it, I do. But here's the reality. Both sides only care about D.C. for political reasons. That's the reality. But each one's trying to make it sound differently, and they shouldn't. I wish they would just come clean and say the truth. I wish Republicans would say, we don't want D.C. to be a state because it's going to affect us politically in the Senate. And I wish Democrats would say, we want D.C. to be a state because it'll give us an advantage in the Senate. That's why both sides care. They're both selfish. But of course, Mondaire does what I think is worse. And I know some of you be mad at me, but I'm going to tell you what I really feel. He's making it worse because he's playing the race card because he can. Republicans are trying to not play the race card. They're lying too. Let's be clear. Both sides are lying. The only reason why either side wants him to be a state is because of the advantages in the Senate. They're both lying. I think this is worse. worse. One Senate Republican said that D.C. wouldn't be a, quote, well-rounded working class state. 
Mm -hmm. I had no idea there were so many syllables in the word white. One See of my that? House Republican colleagues said that D.C. shouldn't be a state because the district doesn't have a landfill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my goodness. With all the racist trash my colleagues have brought to this debate, I can see why they're worried about having a place to put it. Now, that was just literally a terrible thing to say, period. Are there racist people in the Senate and Congress? I'm sure. But to call every Republican racist because they don't want D.C. a state, you're just making things worse. Literally, you're making things worse. If you were to say what you should say, which is true, which is, hey, we're disenfranchising 700,000 people, many of them black, that's an accurate statement. So why not say that then? If you're going to play the race card, if you're going to do that, then how about instead just go, hey, here's a problem, and, and that a lot of people are black, why don't we try to fix it? At least you're not saying everybody's a racist, everybody who's white is bad constantly saying white man bad is not going to help things. It just makes things worse. The truth is there is no good faith argument for disenfranchising over 700,000 people, Mr. Speaker, most of whom. Now that is what he just should have said. That's an actual answer. That's an actual issue. Just say that there is an issue here, guys. We got seven, 700,000 people who, who disenfranchised. Valid point. Why do you have to make it white man bad? Why is that required? Our people of color. Terrible way of doing things. Nothing but bad. GOP House members, as you can hear, erupted in opposition, asked for Congressman Jones to agree to have his remarks stricken from mm -hmm. the congressional of course. record. He consented, but said that- Of course he consented, because Jones did it, not because he actually believes it, he doesn't, and not because he thought it would be effective. He knew it wouldn't be. He did it to get a soundbite and to get on TV. Well done, right? His goal was to get on TV. Mondaire, well done. That's what you wanted to do. That is why he did it. The GOP's objections are all about fear. Congressman Mondaire Jones joins me now. There he is. Thank He's on TV. Is it necessarily racist well done. to oppose DC statehood? Now, listen, he literally asked the question. He says, is it necessarily racist to oppose D.C. statehood? That's the question that Smirconish asks, giving him a chance to go, you know what? Let me back away. Let me change. I got my 15 minutes of fame. Let me, he Smirconish gives this guy an opportunity to now go, look, you know, I was hyperbolic. I was emotional, whatever. You could have easily walk this back right now do you think he's going to walk it back yeah we'll see in, in the case of the debate today it is of course he says it is <laughs> of course he says that this was your chance dude to to, to back it off to go ah, i don't think all my, my my all republicans are racist blah 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 nope double down because when you listen to the explanation explanation set forth by my Republican colleagues, uh, you can see quite clearly that you can't say my Republican colleagues when you just call them all racist. And I want you to think you listening, watching right now, someone at work, your job calls you a racist publicly on TV. You're going to want to work with them. You know, you're not going to. This is not helping, Mr. Jones. This is not helping. You are making things worse. That's the problem. You're making things worse. And now these people who you're supposed to work with it cross the aisle and unity. It's not working, my friend. And worse, you're making everybody else scared to say anything. So now even your fellow Democrats who are white are going to be scared to say anything because you're going to throw the race car on them. This is not helpful. That they are not offered in good faith. Uh, and the fact is, and something that I'm, I'm hoping people increasingly become aware of, is Tell that me. if you uphold systems of white supremacy, even if you do not consider yourself to be racist, you are- Look at Shmokanish's face go down the second this horrible person says white supremacy. Why? 
Do you have to, uh, there's, Larry, why are you against the phrase white supremacy? I'm 100% against the word white supremacy because when you use that phrase, the word, I'm sorry, the phrase, when you use that phrase white supremacy, you are by default, whether you think you are or not, you are blaming all the white people of today. You're blaming every white person today. Wrong and wrong. You can't blame every white person. And why are you blaming today's white person for last century's white person? You're doing both of them that are wrong. So don't use that phrase. If you're going to say there are certain people who are disenfranchised, okay, let's have that conversation. I'm open to that. Let's. I've discussed it. I've shown you how I see it. If you want to fix the system, let's not blame the people who have to fix the system. You can't fix the American system without white people. That's impossible. In case you didn't know, white people are a big part of our country. So you can't just to say, oh, you white people are evil. By the way, help me fix the system. It doesn't work. You've got to say, hey, white people, can you agree with me that it's a bad system? They go, yeah, that's a bad system. Okay, can we fix it? Sure, let's do that. That can happen. That's possible. That's the issue. And this guy's making stuff worse and he's on TV. But look at Smart kind of his face. Like, oh, he used the, the white supremacy word. Oh, phrase. Oh, my God. Nothing but bad. Engaging in racist activity. So there are 700,000 people in the District of Columbia. Yeah. More than in the state of Wyoming and Vermont. Yep. Yes. So the idea that we would disenfranchise those people, that we yep. would tax them without representation, something we yes. fought in the Revolutionary War over, by the way, uh, is... Yes, he's right in what he's saying at 100%. I agree the people of D.C. should have representation. But if that's the case, why didn't we care about that? I don't know, 200 years ago or so? They haven't had representation for how many centuries now? They haven't had it forever. So, but now it's critical, right? I, I didn't care last year. I didn't care 20 years ago. A hundred, literally a hundred years ago, I didn't care. But now, oh, now that's the thing. And it's only because I care about race, not because I want to get two more senators. And again, that's the problem. I don't mind the two more senators piece. I really am okay with that. All I'm saying is just say the truth. Just tell the truth. It's unconscionable. And when you compare the states that we have in franchise with the District of Columbia and the demographics there, overwhelmingly people of color, uh, it is it is quite a sinister thing. Now, here's my point. He's right on this, meaning that there are more people of color in D.C. compared to Wyoming. That's true. So that means you could say this is racial or there is a racial component to it. OK, I'll buy that argument. Let's discuss it. I'm OK with that. But something having a racial component or something having uh, or being racial doesn't make it by default racist. There is a difference. And once you use that phrase racist, you turn people off. Stop using it. it it's, it's terrible. It is nothing but bad. If you got an issue that happens to be racial, bring it up. Hey, race is involved in this. Can we have a conversation? Yeah. And guess what? The people who aren't the race who are in, in, involved will have that conversation. They'll talk to you because now you're not blaming them. You're asking them for assistance in making a change. This is just common sense business 101, leadership 101. And we can't seem to find it here at all. We can't find it at all. Well, I think I heard you say that to oppose it today is mm -hmm. necessarily racist. And you probably Opposing know today. where I'm going with this. When the first vote was taken on D.C. statehood in 1993, a majority of Democrats joined Republicans in mm -hmm. opposing it. We're yeah, it used to be about 30 years ago that all of everybody was against it. Democrats were against it. Republicans were against it. So they were all racist then? Everybody was racist then? Democrat, well, Democrats didn't want the crime bill. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe that is true. I don't know. But my point is they were all look, look at look at Jones's face. Like, damn it, don't say Democrats. Look at look how mad he is. Why are you saying that? Shh, just go along with my my thing that all Republicans are evil. Just go along with this, McConnell. What are you doing?
Jones is not liking this. Are they racist? Right is right and wrong is wrong. Oh. And so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, people can come to a place of enlightenment, uh, as many people who voted in 1993 have now come to today, saying, you know what? That See, he's now you're enlightened because you think like him. Oh, that's good. Enlightenment. Wow. This guy's terrible. This guy's terrible. That was the wrong thing to do, uh, to uphold a system that disenfranchises 700,000 plus people mm -hmm. is voter suppression on its face. Oh, it's voter suppression now, too. Okay. Uh, whoa. He threw a but. Well, to be forward, it is voter suppression. But you've made everything that's voter suppression also racist. So now when people hear voter suppression, they immediately hear racist. Instead of thinking voter suppression is bad, period, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, no matter what bad, now people immediately go, oh, racist again. And you turn pe people shut off. And it is something that we need to be rectifying today, especially given what's happening throughout the country. Uh, in yeah, especially with what's happening throughout the country. Country. You mean especially what your consistent your constituents want you to yell about now? Not that you care, you don't. And let me keep going before I get upset. States attempts to suppress the right to vote of Black and Brown people, including SB two zero two in Georgia, which famously became law. So now we've linked Georgia to this too. So now we just link everything together. Month or so ago. If D.C. attains statehood as you're advocating, mm -hmm. must Puerto Rico necessarily follow? Watch this one. Uh, Puerto Rico is a completely separate question, and it's something that... Uh, Why is that a completely separate question? Aren't they Americans also? But three million or so Puerto Ricans, if I'm not mistaken, I think three million in that area. Right, three million Puerto Ricans? That's more than D.C. Shouldn't they get statehood if they want it? And by the way, I happen to agree that Puerto Rico should not be a state. Puerto Rico should decide if it wants to be a state or independent. I think the Puerto Rican people have a, a total, um, they have the right to decide they want to be an independent country. Okay, awesome. Or you want to be a state? Okay, awesome. But my view on this is very straightforward. Guam, American Samoa, Puerto Rico, America should not have an empire. We should not have territories. Either become independent or become a state or join a state, right? I don't know, maybe American Samoa wants to join Hawaii and Hawaii agrees. I have no idea if that makes any sense or not. I'm just saying, great, go do that. Whatever is the case, whatever is the case, let them decide. And it's exactly the same. Many of the, Puerto, of, of the members of Congress of Puerto Rican descent are engaging in a very increasingly high profile debate over. I yeah. think if the people of Puerto Rico want statehood, then they should become a state. What of the solution that some have proposed, recognizing uh -oh, that Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton doesn't get to uh, uh, vote and there is no Correct. Senate representation, as you've reminded Correct. us, yep. why not take a portion of what currently comprises the district, give a portion of it to Maryland and a portion of it to uh, Virginia, allowing for a mm -hmm. more narrow district to remain as prescribed by the Constitution so that the... Now, this is the piece that I love. Smirconish is giving a real answer to solve the actual problem. The actual problem is the people who live in D.C. don't have representation. That is an actual problem. So Smirconish says, okay, why don't we kind of chop it up? and give a chunk of those people to Virginia, then they'll have a Virginian, you know, district or Virginian um, um, a representation and a chunk go to Maryland and then they get to have it too. They also get to vote and get everything they need, all of that, right? Absolutely. And then we just have a, a slither, which will basically just be offices, right? Where, where, the, where the nation will work its business. There won't be residences there. It'll just be basically offices. That'll be it. And then that would solve the problem, wouldn't it? No need for a DC statehood. No need even necessarily to change the constitution because you'd still have a small district. You might have to amend it somewhere, maybe, who knows, but it probably could be constitutional if you had a small district, but no residence, no residential area in, in, DC, in DC. And instead give those, give those two areas to either Maryland or Virginia or a, either one of them or some combo, whatever, giving the people the representation that, that's the real problem.
The problem isn't whether D.C. or should be a state or not. The problem is you have 700,000 Americans who don't representation. But here's my issue. That's been true for 100 years. The folks who live in the district today do have Senate representation and a voting member of Congress. Yep. Do you mean why apply a double standard to the 700,000 plus people in Washington, D.C., uh, most of whom are people of color? I mean, because that is the question, frankly. In no, so so you, uh, what he just said is, Michael, why do you hate black people? That's what he just said. If you think he said something else, he didn't. What he said was, Michael, why do you hate black people? That's what he just said. Wyoming and in Vermont, for example, as I mentioned earlier, there is actually a smaller population than what is in Washington, D.C. And mm -hmm. yet those states have two senators uh, as well as congressional representation. Look, if you don't like the Senate, the Senate rulings, the way the, way the Senate ru uh, runs, <clears throat> and I get that. There's an argument for that, right? I get the argument that why does, you know, South Dakota have two um, and Wyoming has two and California has two. I get that argument. Again, that's an argument to have, but that's not a race argument. That's, that's a, oh, I think the constitution needs to be amended to fix that argument. I'm open to that conversation. I think everybody should be open to that conversation because maybe that's an issue, but that's not based on race. That's based on, could the founding fathers ever have known that one state could have 80 times the population of another. And again, we could have that conversation. I'm open to even changing that. I mean, I don't know. I haven't really thought that through, but I'm totally open to that conversation. It's not race. It's not upon, you know, people hurting each other. It's based upon representation in the constitution. I'm happy to have that conversation any day of the week. Let's stop making exceptions for people of color in a way that has adverse implications for them. See Let's that? Enfranchise right, but, the, but, but, making... but the but but respectfully the the exception wouldn't be made in the case of of Wyoming because what was it? Article 1 section 8 of the constitution didn't say anything about Wyoming. It said we're going to create a district for the administration of government. You get the final word. Yes, he literally is saying, I'm sorry, uh, my volume is not. Let me see if I can fix it the next video I put up. I'm not sure how that works. Let me see if I can do better next time. I apologize, guys. Um, what he's saying is, look, Wyoming and the other states, they aren't the ones talking about, you know, it, it, they, they aren't in the Constitution. D.C.'s in the Constitution, so what are you going to do? That's what he's saying. Yeah, I, I, respectfully, I, I think your response is not something that addresses the issue of those two states having more representation, which is to say really any representation, yeah, so he was like, that constitution is stupid. That's what is his response. His response was, constitution is stupid. Uh, you know, why is the constitution black people? Well, the constitution kind of does, but that's fine. That, that is the point. That, that, that's what, that's, that's, that drives me crazy. And I wanted to bring that up because we're going out of our way to make everything out of race, everything about race, and it shouldn't be. We've now taken a serious issue that people could talk about. There are two issues here that are valid issues to discuss. One of them is people in DC not having representation, totally valid to discuss. And the other one is, do we believe that the Senate still works with different populations? These are real issues. And I'm happy for anyone to sit here and say, let me tell you why, why way A is the right answer or way B is the right answer whatever the case may be, I'm totally out of that conversation. But once you add race to it, you're making things worse. The problem is now you have people shut off right away, don't want to hear it. And even worse, you're making people run away from you. I have never seen, none of never, but the Democrats won the war last year. They won the battle last year. And man, they are losing the peace. They had an opportunity. The Democrats actually had an opportunity to be more about unity, to, to bring more people together. There was an opportunity and they are throwing it in a way if they haven't already thrown it away. They're throwing it away as fast as they possibly can. The amount of Democrats I know in New York City, I know lots of Democrats who are like, who the hell are these Democrats? Who the hell are these people? I'm not, I don't represent, these people are represented by me anymore. I don't know who these people are. 
Everything's about race. Everything's about race. This is about race now too. DC is about race. I would respect him more if he literally just said, we should make DC a state now so Democrats could control the Senate. I literally would respect him more because then I'm like, oh, okay. He's honest. All right, fine. I get where he's going. I might disagree with that, but okay. That, that, at least I don't think he's a liar. At least he's not turning people off and running away from him. The war, the war on racism is making more racist. The war on terror made more terrorists. The war on drugs gave us more addicts. The war on racism is giving us more racists. He is making people not want to hear black plight at all. He's turning people away from his own movement in theory. I mean, I'm not sure if it's his own movement, but in theory, he's making it terrible. There are real problems in our system that we can talk about. And once you add this, no one's going to listen. It's going to, they're going to take this problem ish also and just make it political. And now every problem is political because every problem is racist. And what can we solve? Nothing. Nothing. We can solve nothing. I, I, don't, I don't know why we keep doing this. It drives me crazy. I'm sorry, let me grab some of your, your comments. And I got something else, because there's something that goes right along with this that I just got to bring up. And it's actually from the BBC. I think you'll enjoy it. Let me grab some comments. And I apologize, guys, for not having the, the volume as high. I'll, I'll see if I can fix it coming up here in a second. But let me grab some of your comments if I can. So, um, short ways better than Biden's speech. I thought Biden speaks like at 8.30 or something. Am I wrong? I think it's like at that point. So, yes. Jeff says, man, lights, last night's episode got wild. That was hilarious. Guys, thank you. Yes, I try to. One thing I, I think you see me constantly do is I'm trying to show you that I'm human, that I respect everybody, that we all can have conversations. So I put on all the types of people on the show so you understand that I never disrespect anybody. Who, whatever, whoever you are, whatever you believe, I respect you, even if I disagree. Even if I think you are wrong on something, which we all think we each other are wrong on something, you're still human. I respect you, and I and I want to have a conversation. So I'm glad that you enjoyed last night's episode. Yes. So, um, Jimmy says we get something from every episode. Thank you. One of my favorite podcasts. I'm trying. Absolutely. Yes. That's good. All right. Um, John says DC never makes anything better. They want to ban menthol cigarettes to save black lives. That's pretty prejudiced and slightly racist statement. Um, not even slightly, John. It's blatantly racist. It's those of you watching who are either black or have a lot of black people in your life. There's an issue which I know you've heard or felt. And that is why do white people keep thinking they have to save us? I, you don't. And if you're a white person listening now and you're thinking, I got to go save black people, let me tell you, you don't. It's not required. We're okay if you don't save us. Really, we are. You don't have to save us. Not required. You do not have to save us. It's okay if you don't. No worries. You can just go about your business. Um, Don't shoot us. We'd like not to be shot or hurt. Don't do that. Go about your business and we'll be okay. Really, leave basically leave us alone and we'll be okay. And that's not right. Now leave us alone. Don't hurt us. Please interact with us. We would like to be your friends and family and a business associates. We'd like that. Please don't hurt us. And we're good. That's pretty much all we're asking. You don't have to save us. So, John, you're right. They don't have to ban menthol cigarettes. Black people will decide to have them or not. It's fine. Yes. So... <laughs> All right, I see here. Um, DC residents, just like residents in overseas territories like uh, Puerto Rico, US Virgin Islands, Guam, American S Samoa, absolutely. Yep, should have representation. DC should not be a state. The nationals capital should not be tied to any state. I'll buy that, John. So I think they do that. What was some kind of talking about? You make it as a, a thinner slice. So you kind of redistrict it so it's a thinner slice. So there's almost no residential areas. There are no permanent residents in that district. The rest you give back to Maryland and or Virginia, whatever makes the most sense. And we're good. And I think you're right. We do a vote on all of those. Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Guam, American Samoa. Either get rid of them or, or come aboard. That's it. 
Matt, politicians speaking the truth. Ha ha. If you believe that will happen, I have a bridge to sell you near where Larry lives. But Matt, think about it. There are two people who, starting in 2016, who Americans on the left and the right believed were telling the truth. And when they believed it, they wanted to vote for him. Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. 2016, you ask anybody, not anybody, you, you ask a bunch of people who are voting for either. What they will tell you is, I believe them. I think they're telling the truth. They, they tell it like it is. That was one of their biggest selling points in 2016. It really was. That was a big deal. I think theoretically that's happened. A lot of us like it. I think we'd rather have politicians say, look, hey, Democrats, we want to take the Senate, right? Yeah, let's make D.C. a state and we'll do it. And Democrats were like, oh, I, I like that. Let's go do that. You don't have to make it race. You can tell the truth and people would do it. And then at least Republicans, if they're fighting, they would fight for the same reason. And this is the piece about the Supreme Court too. Am I against packing or, or expanding the Supreme Court? In theory, no. In theory, be very clear on that. In theory, no. But the problem is the reason why the Democrats want to do it is to gain control of the Supreme Court. That's the wrong reason. If there was a reason, if someone were to tell me, oh, they need more justices because they can't they can't handle all the cases or or they need to have one that represents each district or it's, I think it's 13 districts in America. So they need you know 13 to represent districts. I'm okay. Again, that's a conversation we can have. Let's have that conversation. Maybe it makes sense. Or the thing I like is the idea of keeping it at nine, but giving every single um, senator an 18 year um, term that expires every two years so that every president picks two. That That's a conversation to have. But, oh my God, we need more power? I still respect it more if they said it, tell you the truth, Matt. Even if they said it. If Democrats just said, I'm scared we can't, we can't pass anything because the Supreme Court, let's pack it with four more so we can, you know, take over. At least it's honest. You can have a real conversation. But they're like, they're lying. I, and it drives me crazy. So, yes. All right. Um, let's see. Um, why does everything have to have the race car thrown in it? Because it works, Jimmy. Because it's red meat for people. It's red meat for for people. That's what it is. Yes, absolutely. Lewis says, the simple answer is that Washington is the capital and collects revenue from 50 states. Oh, interesting. That's kind of true. Good way of thinking about it. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Um, the district was never intended to be a state for very good reasons. This is more constitutional chicanery. And that's like why, uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn, I think that was why McConish was saying redistrict it to take the residential areas out and to give them to states and to just have a smaller district that is only buildings of, of, of work, work buildings. That actually does make more sense, right? I, I, I get the concept behind it. But either way, we have to find an answer, right? We have to find an answer. Yes. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, John says, yes, they're racist in Congress. They want to ban menthol cigarettes to protect you black men because we're in them only black people smoke menthols. I know. I was feeling afraid, John, until this happened. Now I feel, yeah, I feel safe now. Now they're going to ban menthol cigarettes. I, as a black man, I feel totally safe now. Whew. What would I do without Joe Biden? Hmm. Good. Um, Tom says, hi, Larry. Great show with Grab America. Yes. I never heard of them before. I enjoyed it a lot. You should do more shows on those subjects. We need to read up more about them. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I know. I don't know everything. I'm trying my best, uh, Tom. But uh, again, I, I love that stuff. It's great. Yes. Jeff says, people who disagree with me are racist. Volume 1,809,642. Well done. I love that. That's very good. Yes. Um, it's important to note that it's not only Republicans who not wish these to become the state. Definitely not a race issue. Correct. But he just attacked Republicans because this was only political. Right? That's it. That's exactly why I did it, because he was just trying to be political. Absolutely, 100%. All right, um, see if I can grab this one here, if I can. Um, Marge says, I'm sure there are a lot of racist people, but I don't think racism has a color, just like good and bad doesn't have a color, just good people and bad people. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's true. My point is, there are racist people, of course, different levels of it, of course, for different reasons, of course, all colors, of course. But calling someone a racist, Marge, doesn't make it better. 
if you think I'm a racist and you yell racist at me, you didn't make me not a racist. In fact, you just made me defend myself and double down on whatever you think I am, whether that's a racist, misogynist, in, insert ist here, whatever it is. You're, you're pushing more people into being racist. You're pushing more people into being the bad thing that you don't want them to be. If you think that I'm a racist or a misogynist, whatever you think I am, Marge, if you have a conversation with me, you have a chance of changing me. If you just yell at me, you're never going to change me. If the goal is for you to feel righteous, I'm not saying you, Marge. I, I'm, you're clearly not saying that. I'm, I, I'm saying you as in just the idea of you. This guy, um, uh, Jones, he's the one who's just yelling and screaming. He's trying to be righteous, not to solve a problem. He wanted to be popular, get a cool soundbite, raise some money, get on TV. Wow, did it work. I played him. So it worked totally. It, I mean, it totally worked. He, he's not trying to solve anything. He's not. And the problem is, if you saw Smirconish, he was trying to give him an out. He was like, here, I'm giving you an out. Jones was like, I don't want the out. I'm doubling down. This is working. I'm on TV. Absolutely. Andrew says, New York City and the borough should be its own state. I've heard that before. No offense, Larry, but it should be. None taken, brother. The only downfall is that New York State was separate New York City and the boroughs. We cannot let you lie. That's true. See that? See? You're messing around, Andrew. You're going to lose me. That's funny. I'm not upset at all. I totally get that. Yes. So, all right. Uh, the lower lib says, of course he doubles down. He's put up against the wall with a question. That's true, but he still, the, he opened up being able to allow him to open up. Jimmy says, keep in mind, this is just a theater with bad actors. Yes. He can call his colleagues racist. Yeah, they don't care. Corporatism system will still continue. Uh, another good one. So, but I wanna I wanna go to another piece. And this is a little bit off, but I think it's still on. Justin Bieber. This is another race thing I want to bring up. I did the first one was kind of something that really was has substance to it. This one doesn't, but oh my god, this made the BBC. Yes, Justin Bieber, if you guys don't know, is wearing dreadlocks now. And for those of you who don't pay attention, or many of you don't, dreadlocks now is a bad thing for white people because that's cultural appropriation, which now makes Justin Bieber, I guess, a racist. But this made the BBC. That's how big this. Let me hold on. Before I do this, let me see if there is a way I can make uh, the any louder here. I'm not sure if I can make it um, any louder right now. Let me see if I can. And. I will grab that and no. All right. I think, I think I have it as loud as I can. I will. I think that is correct. I think that's good. All right. That's good. Let's see if it works this time, guys. We'll see if it's better. All right. Um, this is from the BBC. Let me know if it's, if it's loud enough for you, if you can hear it. This program's proud boast, first with breaking Bieber news, would be meaningless if we weren't all over his latest hairstyle. There it is. The Canadian pop star's been dividing opinion with his new do. Are these yep. dreadlocks? If so, is that cultural appropriation, Hear that? as some have claimed? Another man's hair got him into trouble on a San Francisco campus. This was in a San Francisco campus. People actually approached this kid about his hair. You're saying that I can't have a hairstyle because of your culture? Yeah. Why? Because it's my culture. You know what the box means? Do you know what it was in Egyptian culture? Are you Egyptian? No, nah, but I'm not. See that? No. Are you Egyptian? No, but that's not. Wait, where's Egypt? I have. Do you notice that she said you can't have the haircut because it's my culture? I, I want to ask anyone who's listening, if you're listening or watching that, where it says you can't, where the, where the young lady says to the young man, you can't, you can't have that hair because it's my culture. How broken are you as an individual that someone wears a hairstyle and you are hurt by it? How broken have you allowed our culture to make you that you would stop someone in the hallway in college and go, how dare you wear the hairstyle of my culture? And how is that even a thing? 
imagine how broken you as an individual that you look back and go, oh my God, he's got my hair. I'm, I'm, I'm destroyed. Wow, you are broken as an individual. I have certainly been told, made aware in no uncertain terms, mm -hmm. that hairstyles that I've had that have been deemed too black are not appropriate for that situation. So yeah, again, when you see a white person who's able to just kind of experiment with these hairstyles um, as though they're some sort of costume and isn't subject to any of the sta same stigmatization that a black person might be. Um, it's, 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 it's very frustrating. So let me, uh, let me get what she just said. What she said was in case you missed that. Well, in my life, I've been told that some of my hairstyles are inappropriate or wrong for business or not professional. That's true. That absolutely has happened a hundred percent. That's true. That's a real thing. She said, and then to have some white person be able to do it, you know, like some kind of costume. What is a hairstyle? It's a costume. What do people use hairstyles for? To either show off or to, why do skinheads shave their head? To show they're part of the club or whatever the case may be. Why in the world would that be a bad thing? How is that a, a, a bad thing? And she's like, well, they get to do it without, without this. So now everyone should be punished like you were punished? This goes back to my earlier point. Do I want to punish the white person or do I want to have the white person help me change a system? That is probably the better bet, isn't it? If I don't like the fact that someone might look at my dreadlocks and go, dreadlocks, I don't like that. Shouldn't I instead say, hey, man, why don't you view me for me and not my dreadlocks? And we'll be fine versus going, now no one can have dreadlocks except for me. That's what she's saying. And somehow she's seen as righteous for that. But there is some good news. This is a British, this is the UK, BBC. This is the UK. They're talking about dreadlocks in the barbershop. At this busy mixed barber shop in London this evening, the reaction to the Bieber Barnet furore seemed to be keep your hair on. Keep your hair on. I wish I had that my hair, right, Luke? <laughs> no, more than I think why not? I think if you've got hair, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Now I want to be clear. Most of these people are like, whatever, just do your hair, right? And this is my and this is the biggest issue. The people who are becoming so hard on this, who are fighting so hard on this, they're alienating everybody else. And for those of you who are watching, if you're Republican, you might go, you're Democrats are this, Democrats are that. The average Democrat doesn't think this way. I know many of them. The average Democrat does not think this way. They are a very, very loud minority. Very loud minority. That's a lot. Of, you see it. You watch Fareed Zakari. I've shown you get mad at this. Smirconish is Democrat. He's walking away. Bill Maher is walking away. You are seeing Democrats going, this is just too far for me. They're like, I hated Trump, but I don't want to go here. And that's where our Democrats are going. And this little thing, this is the UK, but this, the, the sentiment is common. Oh, they look pretty. Yeah, I think they look nice. Really? Yeah, I do. I think... Um, the crossover between cultures, isn't it? Because it's predominantly known as a Afro-Caribbean type of thing. It, it looks a bit more like a punk, doesn't it? Look at that. The, the, yeah. Okay, so the black guy's okay with it. The Asian woman's okay with it. The white guy's okay with it. Mm. Yeah, like, that looks uh, a bit punky. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's not like a uh, neat, like Rasta or no. anything. I mean, he's like okay with it. ones here. Oh, geez. He's like, whatever. Too good there. It, he is copying the black style of dreads, I suppose. You could look at it like that, but he's he sort of changed it up a bit. I mean, it's, it's, as I say, it's like Mick Hucknall and Boy George. They they try to do something like that. So now the black woman's like, yeah, I don't really like it much. You could, but look, Boy George did it. And for those of you who aren't old enough to know who Boy George was, um, some of us are old enough to remember Boy George. Boy George was a very popular pop singer in the 80s, and he did it too, and he's white from, from the UK. And he did it, and people didn't jump up and down. And she's like, yeah, it's all right, I don't like it, but whatevs. And if, if he'd come to you for them, what would you have said? 
<laughs> You'll be in the chair right there. I'd, I'd, I'd actually ask one of the customers to get up and get him straight in the chair. It's Justin Bieber. It's Justin he Bieber. Whatever he wants. Stephen Smith were with me. In so now you would think that this would be okay, but no, the BBC now says, let me bring in these three people so we can talk about this. And yeah, we want to talk, let me, I'm going to go to the comments, but just look at this. This is Justin Bieber in another country. And this dreadlock thing made the BBC and they got a panel for it. Like they got a panel for this thing. Isn't that nuts? But I, I guess not that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me just keep going here. So um, Andrea says, how is dreadlocks not hippie culture? Thank you, Andrea. Yes. I used to tell a joke. I don't say it as much now, but I used to. Um, I used to teach a networking class and I talked to me about networking, right? The business networking, not computer business networking. And when I would teach it, uh, I taught it at Yale and at Columbia. And when I was teaching at Columbia, people would often be networking in um, in New York City. So I would tell a joke. I'd say, if you ever have to, you know, if someone ever wants to meet for coffee, I'll tell a story. You know, it's okay. Coffee, meeting for coffee in the business world. And I'm not sure that's true anymore since the since the COVID lockdown, but prior to it, it was true. What, co what meeting for coffee meant, not it didn't mean dr drinking coffee. It meant a short meeting with no food. That's what let's grab a cup of coffee meant in the networking business networking world about five years ago or so. That's what it meant. If you said, let's have a cup of coffee, you didn't mean coffee, you meant short meeting, no food. And I explained to people what it meant. But if someone actually wanted coffee, you have two choices. If it's a large organization, they always have coffee there. If it's a small organization, bring coffee. And they would say, which coffee to bring? Only two things. If you're in New York City, but not Brooklyn, you always bring Starbucks. Because that's the safest and it's stuff you're supposed to bring. But if you're in Brooklyn, you always go to the nearest guy who's a white guy with dreadlocks. Whoever that guy is, whatever coffee he has, get his coffee because that's Brooklyn and Brooklyn's hippie. Now, I'm joking. It was a joke I would say, but it's based on some true stuff in Brooklyn if you know Brooklyn. But to your point, Andrea, white guys with dreadlocks, that's hippie culture. That's hipsters, hippies. That's what that is. There's no doubt. But all of a sudden now it's cultural appropriation. It's crazy. Missy says, soon as someone demands I can't do something, that's when I triple down doing it and ride that wagon until the wheels fall off. And Missy, that you've you've hit my point exactly. In an attempt to get people to not do things that might be racially insensitive, you're attacking people, and now they're gonna double triple down. You're gonna get more insensitivity if that's your goal. I'm just not sure if it's their goal. Christine says, oh my God, chill the F out, everyone. Dress however you want, rock whatever hairstyle you want. Thank you, Christine, I would agree. Rock whatever hairstyle you want. Yes. John says, how is wearing dreadlocks cultural appropriation? Vikings had dreadlocks while this country was even a thought. That's true too. Actually, you know what? Let me keep going because they actually bring that piece up, John. I think you you and them are on the same page. Let me, bring, let, me, let me keep going because they actually bring this up. This is the panel, so critical, Justin Bieber. In the studio is Ian Dunn, the editor of politics.co.uk, Emma Dabiri, an academic and writer, and from New York, the writer, Shimon Suleiman. They got people from New York, they got academics, they got writers, because this Bieber thing, critical. Evening to you all. Shimon, first of all, there's a particular big debate in the U.S. Yep. Do you think uh, Justin Bieber has done something wrong? Oh, good question. I think... I think uh, we shouldn't necessarily hold celebrities to 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 a higher status than than uh, we should the, the rest of ourselves. I now, wow, is that dumb? Of course you should. Like you opening with that statement, okay, you're an idiot. I mean, we shouldn't. We shouldn't hold people who control more power over us because they're celebrity to a higher standard. Of course we should. Of of course we should. They have higher social power, higher social status. People give them money because of their social status or because of their celebrity or because of their popularity. Of course we should. So dumb off the bat. I think that the issue really is, I mean, he's allowed to do what he wants with his own hair. He's allowed to, it's his own bodily autonomy. But we have a responsibility to each other and we have a responsibility to marginalized communities to listen to why this hurts or if there's something that we're doing that is harmful. Okay, that's true. 
we do have a responsibility and we should listen to marginalized communities. That's true. To something that hurts them or makes them better. That's true. We should. It's hairstyle. Stop. Larry, you're victim shaming. Where's the victim? I, I would be open to a conversation on how I'm victim shaming if you could show me a victim. Now, if there was a finite amount of dreadlocks, so like if Justin Bieber had dreads, now some black woman can't have dreads because Justin Bieber got her dreads. Okay, th- there's an argument there. But you can still have dreads if you want dreads. Justin Bieber having them doesn't affect you at all. It's really okay if he does or doesn't. And what might be harmful about it. And then it's not harmful. Informed decision from no stupid thing that made no sense. Her response should be Justin Bieber's a public figure. We do need to hold him to a higher standard because he's a public figure and he makes tons of money on people giving him tons of money. So we should hold him to a higher standard. At the same time, let him do what works. The guys in the, in the paper, I'm in the paper. Look how old I am. The guys in the media now because of his hairstyle. Well done, Justin. Keep on going. That's the appropriate answer. That. Nobody's hurt by and this. In your view, what is harmful? Nothing is. I think there's a fine line between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. N- no, there isn't. There's no that there, there is no line. There's, this is a thing. It doesn't matter. Cultural appropriation is when it used to happen. It was a thing. No doubt it was a thing. But cultural appropriation would be something like. Someone goes into the Bronx in 1970s. A white guy goes in the Bronx 1970s and says, this rap thing is awesome. I'm going to start rapping now. And then rap becomes a white thing. And then all the white rappers who stole it from the, from the, um, from the, from the, the black and Hispanic rappers in the Bronx, then they become wealthy. Cultural appropriation. But deciding to wear a cool Kangol hat in the 80s because you thought Run DMC was cool. That's not cultural appropriation. That's you happen to think Run DMC is cool in the 1980s. And that lots of white guys would wear a Kango hat because they thought it was cool. That's not cultural appropriation. That's appreciation. And that's what Justin Bieber's doing. It's a fine line, but it's a line nonetheless. Um, appropriation, I think, there's, there's been a lot of kind of miscommunication around what the word means at the moment. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's, it's not about necessarily enjoying someone else's cultural aesthetic, so to speak. It's about taking an aspect of something that belongs to someone else without that permission, but permission. and profiting from it. Right. Let's- All right. So without that permission, whose permission? Okay. I, I think someone needs permission. For those of you white people out there who require some permission to have dreadlocks. All right. I'm going to do something that I do sometime and do it right now. I, Larry Sharp, have just declared myself emperor of black people. I am self-declared emperor of black people. Hear, hear ye, hear ye. If you are a white person and you would like to wear dreadlocks, I, Larry Sharp, self-proclaimed emperor of black people, have just given you permission on behalf of all black people. You may wear dreadlocks. I've just done so. So now you it's official. You have permission. You may wear dreadlocks. I am now going to step down. I'm going to abdicate my throne. I am no longer emperor of black people. Done. Okay, so now you're set. Can we end this now? I've given you permission. And I'm no longer emperor now. I, I, only, I was only emperor for like 20 seconds so I could give you permission. So now you have it. Again, how stupid. Who's permission? Jesse Jackson tells you if you can do it or not. Insanely dumb. Put that um, to you and done. Ha- let, let me put that. Sure. Let me put that to Ian Dunn. Yeah, put someone else um, on because you're an idiot. Particularly, it's somebody taking something from another culture, particularly a dominant culture, and taking advantage of, for example, a marginalized culture. Now, this is a valid point that she brings up, right? The first person to get off her because she's she's clearly should not even be on TV, but she actually comes up with a valid point. If a dominant culture were to take something from a marginalized culture, and then because you're a dominant culture. You don't allow them to grow from it, but you grow from it. That is cultural appropriation. And of course, that did happen with certain aspects of black music uh, last century. That did happen. There was some of it that absolutely did happen. But that's a specific thing. And if you're talking about that specific thing as a group of a dominant culture that keeps down the other culture and then takes it, that's different, right? You could say that in theory 
um, uh, for many different things that happened over the course of history. Some guy wearing dreadlocks is not that. Yeah, I mean, like Chicken Tikka Masala or um, or Elvis Presley and the Blues, which basically created rock and roll, is exactly. Oh, the- okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Let, my white friends, my brothers and sisters, let me please give you a bit of advice when talking to black people. Never say Elvis Presley created rock and roll. We're not going to be happy when we hear that. Particularly if you're an older male, older females too, but particularly older males, we, we don't want to hear that. Don't don't say that. Just go, Elvis Presley, loved him. Fine. All good. You can love Elvis Presley. But if you say he invented rock and roll, we are not going to like that. Because that was cultural appropriation. In that case, Elvis Presley took a black form of music. And because the industry was white and dominated back then, that made sure that the black artist could not make money and that he could. That was a thing. Literally, they were banning black bands from going on stages. They were banning black bands from being on TV. All those things. They were banning black bands from being on the radio, getting music contracts. That's true. Now, today, if you look at like rap musicians as an example, R&B musicians, the vast majority of people who are making money are also the black artists. That concept of cultural appropriation, that same thing does not exist like it used to. That was, without question, that's that 70 years ago, give or take. Is, am, I about, am I about right? 70 years ago, give or take. That was cultural appropriation. That doesn't happen to anywhere near the level now. I mean, I'm close. Are you now saying that if, if Americans make anime, it's cultural appropriation of the Japanese? No, the vast of people making money are, are usually East Asians, either Koreans or Japanese. Some Chinese, but it's heavily Korean and Japanese. But that's not cultural appropriation. That's enjoying it because you like anime or you like rock and roll, whatever. But guys, please don't do that thing. Ah, because as, as we are, as people, we mix and we mix culturally and we mix artistically. And thank Very God true. that we do, because if we don't, we are functioning in an almost identical operational way to the way the far right has always asked us to in our little identity ghettos. And that seems like yes. a rather more severe thing for us to face than just- a- it's, it's, it's the horseshoe theory, right? The left becomes so left, it becomes hard right. The hard right becomes so hard right, it becomes hard left, right? So it's that horseshoe theory. And he's right on this one. I mean, don't say the Elvis Presley thing, but besides that he's correct. If we walk down this road that deeply, there's no difference between hard right and hard left. Beaver's hacker. Emma, does intent matter then? I think for, for to begin, I think saying that Elvis started rock and roll is oh, typical of the type of erasure that happens um, when we see cultural appropriation at its finest. It's when Yeah, I, I don't like something she said, but she's totally right here. And please, my white friends, don't ever don't say that. You're just gonna tr- you're just gonna trigger black people. Just say you like Elvis and move on. You don't want to say he started rock and roll because you're gonna you're gonna trigger us. A, a white, generally a white artist, is credited, and history will credit this person. As that being is responsible true. That is being responsible for something that has been born. Off- Shame on him for walking into that trap. From, from black struggle and, and black innovation. And you would say that about the Rolling Stones as well. I'm not. Uh, uh, we, if, if we're going to say that the Rolling Stones. See, she can't say Rolling Stones because it isn't really true. It's semi true. By the time the 60s were coming, black artists were starting to make their money. We had Motown. It was starting to happen. So it isn't as crystal clear with the Rolling Stones. Um, but it was, cr- and the Rolling Stones, by the way, um, actually tried to hire and assist other black artists. And that's why she's kind of hesitating on Rolling Stones. Elvis Presley, that's not the case. That was cultural appropriation. Invented rock and roll, that's the problem. Yes, they've contributed to rock no. and roll and they're rock and roll artists in their own right. But to say that they invented it right. or that they're the source of the creativity, it is completely spurious, yeah. ahist- ahistorical and inaccurate. And also, I think what's really crucial is the idea that this was framed, I think the question was, is this an insult to African culture? Was that some, there, was something, mm-hmm. there was something like that. The question was talking about African culture. I think when we live in um, a time when African cultures, which are obviously diverse, are still kind of routinely stigmatized, presented what? as lesser, presented as primitive really? and underdeveloped, yet at the same time. African culture, um, is she talking about like Africa from Africa? Or is she talking about African-American or as they say in the UK, Af- Afro-Caribbean for the UK? Is she saying that? I don't think that's true at all. I think she's just made that up. The amount of people I know who are not black who love things that are typically black. 
I mean, whether it's basketball, soul food, rap music, insert thing you want to say that's typically black. There's lots of people I know who are not black who love things that are typically considered black constantly. I'm not sure that's true at all. How about the amount of amount of white guys who think they want to be the, as cool as the as the as their as their black friend? I think there's a. I don't think that's true. I think she's making this up. Time there's a systematic extraction of African resources, mm -hmm. be they physical, um, material, and cultural. That's when it steps into appropriation because it's not appreciated. Okay, if you're saying appropriation, meaning that you're you're going in and taking, I don't know, resources from the Congo. That's not cultural appropriation, that's just exploitation, which there's an argument for that without question. But you can't mix, I don't know, China or the UK or whomever, the US going into Congo and, you know, extracting blood diamonds or whatever. I don't, do they do blood diamonds in the Congo? Whatever that is, right? Whatever the, the, the bad stuff we've done in sub-Saharan Africa, which we're totally guilty of terrible things. The West is, and so is the Far East, guilty of terrible things in sub-Saharan Africa. That's not the same as Justin Bieber wearing dreads. Stop it. Stop it. You're, you're making this something far bigger than it is. Because we don't actually appreciate African cultures when, when, when black people are participating mm -hmm. in that cultural production. It's only, it's it's only, only when white, white people person then starts to... The rap industry is full of black people. The entertainment industry is full of black people. A am I wrong with this? Now, if you, again, if you go back 70 years... They were they were not the industry. It was just entertainers, no producers, no owners. That's true. If you go back seventy years, today, um, I'm not sure that's true. I would be happy if someone would show me data, show me that I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I I just don't see that being true culturally. I mean, Oprah is, I mean, she's a mogul. Beyonce, a mogul. Simmons, a mogul. P. Diddy, a mogul. Um, I don't know. Damon, a mogul. I mean, I think there's many who are, are who are making money in the cultural era. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong here. I'm happy to be proven wrong here. I, I don't I think what she's just talking like, well, what about 70 years ago? I take ownership. Exactly. So if, if we were just to put to one side, for instance, the idea whether he invented rock and roll or not, fine, yeah. put that all to one side. Thank you. Put that was away. Was Elvis taking the blues and doing something with it, was that an act of cultural appropriation? Yes, it was. I think the fact that he is now known as the king of rock and roll is yes. it just, it speaks to the fact that a white person will always end up being credited with. That's true, but Michael Jackson's king of pop. And Michael Jackson, as he looked white at the end because of his skin condition, Clearly a black person. Clearly a black person. Maybe Diddle's children. I hope not. But still, King of Pop. I think it's still true, right? Who would I mean, is is there an is is there an American, you know, on the planet? Is there an American on the planet who's ever been American in America now who is over the age of, I don't know, 20, who doesn't know who Tupac or Biggie are? I, 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 I'm not sure this is accurate. An innovation that has come out of black struggle and black creativity. So it's, it was a bad thing that happened when he took on the blues and changed it? Because most people consider black, that started a, a rich white. cultural heritage it's, that we have all enjoyed. But it's not as black and white. It, it, okay, hold on. This is a, he makes a valid point, but he screwed up by doing the first thing. If you're going to say, look, we want to mix. It's important that we mix. The American melting pot makes a great culture that people love. Yeah. If you remember... There was a South Park episode. I always bring up South Park episodes. One of my favorite shows. Um, years ago, when Chef was on, uh, still on, the, when Isaac Hayes, who re who passed away several years ago, um, when Isaac Hayes was playing Chef, when Isaac Hayes uh, was was playing Chef, talking to people, he was saying, us black people, we have to keep changing words because every time we say the words, you white people pick it up and then we don't, we want to have our own words. We keep changing. So it used to be, you know, for show. Then it became for shizzle. And then we had to change and it said something else, right? He, he made something up, right? And he said, that's how we got to keep changing it. Now that's a joke, but that's also what makes us great. Yeah, we absorb each other's cultures. The, the non-white person is picking up black culture because they like it. They think it's cool or special or different or unique. Not because they're trying to make fun of it. Not trying to make money off of it. You think the average white kid in high school who's trying to, you know, be like his favorite rapper is is doing it so he can make money? He's doing it because he thinks it's cool. That's why he's doing it.
And that's fine. It's not cultural appropriation. That's a good thing. And if he wouldn't have said the, the Elvis thing, he could have said, isn't the melting pot a good thing? And she wouldn't have a, a, a comeback, but she does because Elvis thing. But do you it good or bad? Yeah, but do you, an erasure do, of the truth. do you accept the point that often when when something is taken and in the past because there was more power attached to the white experience, absolutely. then they, they absolutely got the credit for and it. And we absolutely live in a racist society and we live in an unequal and an unfair yeah. society. It's just that this is not a very sensible way of dealing with that fact. Um, now, that is the home run statement. We have an unequal society. That's true. It's true. He says this is not a this is not an effective way of dealing with it. Yes, that's been my point this entire show. It's not helpful to make everything about race. It's not helpful to keep blaming white people. It's not helpful to say every single thing that something does that might affect someone is harmful or a harm or it hurts people. I get it if you think Justin Bieber looks stupid or you don't like how he looks. Or you hate Justin Bieber, or you don't care at all. All valid. But to think that anyone of color or not, but particularly of color, is hurt by this shows a broken society and a broken individual. No one is hurt. No one is. If you tell me, Larry, you don't know their experience. If you're hurt by this, it's not this that hurts you. You have a deeper problem in you. And I'm not being condescending. If you are hurt, if you're a person of color, and you are hurt because Justin Bieber wears dreads, you have a deeper issue within you that you have to work on. You have been broken by our society. That's the reality. That should not hurt you. You cannot like, I think he's stupid. Eh, whatever, it's fine. But if you're actually hurt, that's a problem deep inside you. And you need to be looking at that. And I know that sounds condescending. It's real. Well, I think it's yes, yes, I was going to come to you realize that in the last... Oh, sure, no problem. No, coming to you, I'm just going to ask you, because we asked before about appropriation, I want to turn and ask you then, what would you regard sure. as being an act of cultural appreciation? Cultural appre appreciation, I think, tends to happen a lot more organically. I, I grew up in London, there's, there's, a, mm -hmm. you know, there's a diverse community there, and often what happens is that subcultures are formed um, yes. through that process, but it has to be an organic thing. I think to, to go back to what Emma was saying about erasure, uh, with, in the last week with the debate that, that was happening around yeah. Henry Goldstein, who was wearing uh, dreadlocks at a San Francisco university, there was... Yeah, that's the kid, the dreadlocks at a San Francisco... Why was that a debate? Shame... Sh I'll, go, I'll go one step further. Shame on the parents. Shame on the parents of those teenagers who raised your kid to be so sensitive and so broken that everything has to be perfect for them or they or they have a heart attack or they just drop dead. Oh, how dare someone do or say shame on the parents for raising a child that has no resilience to anything that might make them feel uncomfortable. How are they supposed to be successful in life when they can't take any setbacks at all? There's a lot of real commitment to kind of the history behind the dreadlock. Uh, how many people wanted to, to, to mention that, that? It's a hairstyle, for Christ's sake. Stop history behind the dreadlock. Stop. John said it. Other people have had it. Lots of people have had it. Vikings had it. Africans had it. Egyptians had it. Lots of people have had dreads. I get it. Please stop this. What's wrong? Why are you giving this credence? Why aren't you saying what I'm saying. This is terrible. But the Celts also wore dreadlocks, the, the Vikings Many also did. wore dreadlocks. And what happened in that conversation, even in that debate, was that the African-American community, the black community, the Rastafarian community, were completely deleted from the discussion. To yes, thank you. This is exactly what Missy said. Thank you, Missy, for bringing this up. Just what you said. If you guys didn't hear that, the black community was deleted from the conversation. Why? Because you attack the white people and call them racist. And when you call people racist who aren't racist, they have to defend themselves because people who aren't racist hate being called racist. The only people who like being called racist are actual racists. They don't mind because they're actually racist. But if you actually defend yourself, it's because you're not racist. You don't like being called racist. So what do you do? You find other answers. You double down and say, see, I'm right. See, I'm not racist. So you delete. 
And now the people who want to be included get deleted. This only makes things worse. And she's like, well, they shouldn't have done that. What did you expect from them? To favor a group of people who haven't existed for the last thousand years, right? Um, and it's 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 this it's well, this let, level of erasure that we're talking about. Well, let, let's talk about. No, but you're encouraging it. I have an idea. Let the dude wear dreadlocks because he thinks it's cool, and if it gets cool, then you can wear your cool dreadlocks too, and everyone will think it's cool. And if he wears it and people don't think it's cool, you can learn. Oh, I shouldn't wear dreadlocks. No one thinks it's cool. That you could just say nothing. I know it's crazy. You could just say nothing. You could go, it's hair. And if you don't like his hair again, if you think he looks dumb or whatever, you can just say that. You don't have to make some kid. And here's the odd part. If you're a white guy wearing dreads, you're probably left-leaning. You might not be. That's kind of stereotypical, but you know what I'm talking about. You probably are. You're probably down with the movement. You probably are. You're probably a Black Lives Matter guy. You probably are. You might not be, but the odds are you are. So now you've just turned him off. You've pushed away your ally. I would think that you'd want an ally in your battle. Clearly you don't. Clearly you don't even want an ally. How stupid is that? Different kind of erasure that you might call it, uh, Emma. If mm -hmm. you look at Beyonce, mm -hmm who got a lot of flack for taking a yeah, Bollywood theme in India as part of a Coldplay music video. So Beyonce picks up a, 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 an Indian theme, Bollywood theme on her videos. Was Beyonce guilty of cultural appropriation? All right, Ben now, I Ben. I think um, Come cultural on, ben. appropriation isn't just about um, kind of taking the signifiers of a different mm -hmm. cultural group and, and, and wearing or using them. Oh, it's, it's not. It's actually more about power dynamics. Mm -hmm. And as oh. far as I'm aware, there isn't... Power. Um, there, there... So Beyonce is not powerful compared to Indian people, right? As far as I'm aware, superstar Beyonce doesn't have a power dynamic over India, one of the poorest countries on the planet. No, no. It's no power. Stop. Isn't such a discrepancy of power dynamics between African Americans and Indians, and there's not kind of a systematic use of Indian culture by African Americans for their own kind of material and cultural. Yeah, but the reverse is true, isn't it? I'll ask this seriously, and this is not to be um, stereotypical, but if you know many Americans who have Indian descent, and I know many of them. The amount of Indian youth I know who love black culture, oh my God, it's all over. Love black culture. Basketball, rap music, many. I mean, obviously not every Indian kid, of course not. But I think many of them do. They like black culture. Is that cultural appropriation? I don't know. It seems insane to think this. Beyonce wants to go ahead and use a, a Bollywood theme. So what? Let her do it. Some kid wants to wear dreads. So what? This idea of cultural appropriation is trying to put us into more and more boxes. Game in the same way that global so, popular culture takes and takes and takes from black culture, but black people are rarely credited. I don't know what you're talking Black people are rarely credited. Where is she getting this from? Am, am, am I wrong? I, I don't know. Am I, where is she getting this from? It seems so silly to me. Uh, so, so do you accept the difference, Ian Dunn, that actually, if, if Beyonce, for example, because mm -hmm. you, you were saying there's a kind of, there's a kind of uh, similarity in terms of power between, for example, an African-American culture and an Indian culture, that actually it's okay for Beyonce to wear dreadlocks. Is that what you're essentially saying? That there is a difference? I'm saying there's a difference because it's about, it's about yeah, power dynamics. Do you dynamics. accept that power dynamics? Yeah, look, let me, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be done with this. The, the issue I'm trying to get at here is there, there are certain aspects that are real, right? There, when there are power dynamics, that does happen. But I'm not seeing that hardly at all now. I mean, again, guys, if you think I'm wrong, please show me that I'm off here. But what I see here is if you go back 70 years, 60 years, 50 years, there were many times when black artists had literally had their stuff stolen, 
by by white elites who had a system that was stopping them. That was happening. That was, in fact, in the 30s and 40s, the norm. Of course it was. Of course it was. Now, nowhere near as much. Many more black artists, many more female artists, many more uh, artists who are in what we call a, a, a marginalized group are moving to the top faster than ever. In fact, even those in power and still at the highest power, many of them, particularly financiers, many are still white males. Not all, but many are. There was a time when almost it was only only white males. That is no longer true either. There are now more female and people of color who are in the financial um, such, uh, financial space making tons of money. Absolutely. And who are financiers. Absolutely true. It is happening more and more. That's a power dynamic. And I think the blatant, clear black and whiteness of that is in today's world gone. If anything, it's cultural, not cultural, classist, if anything. And even that's not 100% true. But maybe you could you could go to maybe classist if you wanted to stretch it. But it really isn't that racist at all when it comes to culture much at all anymore. In fact, who else is setting culture? Not only is culture being set by artists, but culture is also being set by academia. And if you look at academia, man, it's a whole lot more female than it's ever been. It's a whole lot more color than it's ever been. She's an academic herself, right? She's an academic herself, and she's helping to set culture. So this is an old school idea that just isn't the same anymore. It just, it just isn't the same anymore. It's, it's different. It's not the same as it has been. And if you're worried about a power dynamic, I get it. But to think that any of that has anything to do with two things, Justin Bieber's hair, it doesn't, or anyone else wearing dreadlocks or wearing a daishiki if you like it or whatever, right? Or whatever, or, or, or drawing anime because you think it's cool or whatever you think. None of that has to do with any of that. It is only, and next, you don't get permission from a group of people. That entire concept is dumb. How do you get permission from a group of people? I, I don't even work. All I want to do is make sure that what we're doing to the best of our ability is allowing individuals to grow to the best of their ability and not having systems that keep individuals down. How does the black community grow? By having individual black people become powerful. How do women grow? By having individual women become powerful et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Allow people to be powerful, allow people to be strong and their, indi and their individual groups will also become strong. That's how it works. Let me grab a couple comments here if I could. I know some of you are gonna take off and go watch the president, but that's okay. So um, Gwendolyn says, not only did they raise an overly sensitive child, but also mean a nasty one. Yes, absolutely. 100%, that's true. Shame on helicopter parents. Yes, 100%. Michael says, there are a lot of white people in Colorado with dreadlocks because they love Rasta culture, music, and resistance and religion. Yes, it's comical to criticize people for haircuts. Michael, thank you for that. If you like Rasta culture and music and you want to wear dreadlocks, go ahead, man. That's not cultural appropriation. It's not. Just make sure that in Colorado, they let black people make money off of weed too. That's it. Again, I go back to a system. Don't have a system that says black people can't make money off weed. If you allow black people to make money off weed, like everybody else, same as white people, Hispanics, Asians, whatever, and then go ahead, wear your dreadlocks all day. That can't be it would only appropriation if they would take the culture and then a system would keep the black people down. If that were true, that would be cultural appropriation. If that's not true, it's not. It's literally that simple. That's the line. It's a, not, a, it's not a fine line. It's a thick line. Does the system keep the disenfranchised from moving forward? If it does, and the dominant culture takes that, that's cultural appropriation. If the system doesn't do that, wear whatever dreadlocks you want. Life is good. Yes. So, all right. All right. Um, who wants to die on this hill? Too many festies, wooks for that. Jesus Beavis, it's a mind-numbing. Yeah, it is. I, I don't know why people want to, but some. the problem is, Michael, some people want to die on every hill, every hill, not me, but some people do. Yes. Janice says, 
How about the show Hair? That's actually funny. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, Dems are good at that, says Lower Lib, rejecting allies. You know what? It's funny. I've seen people say that more than once, right? That that the the left can be very difficult at letting people in. I've heard that before. And I gotta tell you, you know, in my own world here with with my with my show the sharp way, when I've invited people to speak, come on my show, talk to me. When I invite the right, when they think I'm wrong, the right comes on because they want to scold me. They're going to teach me and own the lib, right? That's what they think. So they're going to come on here and yell at me and own the lib. And they come on. The left usually ignores me. They won't even give me a chance. Oh, you're one of them. Total ignoring, dismissive. And I feel like, look, I'm trying to be an ally to both sides to come my way. The right actually has been more open to having me as an ally. The left has been less open. But recently, left's been better. Some of you probably noticed. I've had more people in the left come on the show. So the left's been better recently. But for a lot of my time doing this, left has been just dismissive, just like rejecting me even as a possible ally, even on things we agree with. Doesn't matter. So yeah. Adam says, this is when the left eats itself because they need to play the victim regardless of their actual victims. You know, this is a valid point, Adam. I do think we don't want to be victim blaming. I'm not a fan of victim blaming. I'm not. The question, though, to your point is, how do you define victim? Some guy wears dreadlocks. There's no victim, right? There's no victim. There's some law in Colorado, and I'm making this up because we brought it up for sake of argument only. There's some law in Colorado saying, you know, um, if you've been convicted of crack cocaine, um, you can't get a, a a cannabis license, knowing that crack cocaine is usually in black neighborhoods and cocaine is usually in white neighborhoods. That would be a systemic issue that would keep black people down on purpose. And then if people then took those people and made them work in the you know for the white people who got the license so they could grow, that would be cultural appropriation or appropriation, and they would be victims in that case. But almost always victims. Government, they're 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 government victims. In this case, there is no victim. I don't want to blame victims, but we got to find victims. So Matt says again, who would have thought that incendiary generalizations about large swaths of population do not change hearts and minds? I know, Matt, crazy. Why can't people have their conversation anymore without attacking each other? Perhaps schools need a class on that. Conversation one on one. How to not talk like an a hole to others. I'm in. Yes, I'm in. A hundred percent. So yes, Josh says, I'm glad these smartest tell us how specific genders and races need to style our hair. Who sounds racist in this discussion? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you're correct. It, it's, it's the horseshoe. The race, the people who are anti-racist are now becoming racist. Yes, a hundred percent. Michael says, you have found one of the most face-palming video I've seen in a long time, maybe ever. I, I aim to please, Michael, and I'm sure I'll get more. Yes. Lil Lip says, what a silly topic to waste hours on. You know what? There was a part of me who didn't want to do this. You're very right. But you know what happened? I got more than one person asking me to touch this. That's why I did it. People send me uh, notes, emails. My friends will text me. They'll just say things. You got to talk about this. And I had more than one person bring this up. And like, Larry, you got to talk about it. You know, you, you got to, people, people feel okay talking to you when it deals with race issues. You're not going to blame people because I don't. And they're like, you got to do it. So I did. I couldn't believe when I, there are, there are video on top of video on top of video on this. I picked BBC because I thought that would, that would make it extra silly that the BBC decided this was worthy of a segment bringing on experts and journalists and stuff. So I think I kind of jumped on top of that. Yes. So yeah. Anyway, hundred percent. Michael says she won't even look at the guy on the right because he opposes her view. Yes. So there's an interview in the eye uh, she, though. She's very condescending. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. So can white guys wear Timberland boots? Yeah. That, perfect example. Thank you, Josh. What if you're a white guy and you want to wear Timberlands? I'm sorry, you want to wear your Tims. I got to say it right. You want to wear your Tims because you think it looks cool. 
Why not? Wear your Tims, man. If you think it's cool, wear your Tims. If not, not, right? Talk about power dynamics, says Michael. I think I did. I hope I did. Um, I tried to express that. Yes, I, I, I think I did. I hope that was, uh, that was good. So, all right. Why isn't anyone complaining about Charlie Pride or Darius Rucker singing country music? Why wasn't anyone worried about the white Canadian that had the number one reggae song for forever? Yeah. Um, I don't think any of those things are wrong, John. I think, I think it's a, it's a valid question and I think they're all good, right? If, if you like country music and and you're black and you want to sing, I mean, I remember Charlie, Charlie Pride passed away. I remember Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride was a pretty kick-ass country singer and people loved him. They liked his music. Good. Just go. I don't really know Darius Rucker as much. Not the guy, is that the guy from, um, from Hooting the Blowfish? Is he, is he on his own now? I think he's on his own, right? I, I think he's on his own now. Um, but people love Tootie and the Blowfish. It, I think it's the same guy, isn't it? I, I don't remember every... Uh, but anyway, my point being, I agree with you, John. If you if you like country music and joy, does that mean Charlie Pride was was taking white culture? Well, no, because there's no power dynamic is, is the concept, right? There's no power dynamic in that one. But the Canadian guy, you could in theory say he was you know, taking the reggae culture. Maybe, but how about it? Maybe he just likes it and he's good at it. That's all I care about. David says, um, if white people smoke Newport menthols, it's cultural exploitation. I like that. I like this. Very good. <laughs> That's good. Um, is a black guy in NASCAR, NASCAR still in white culture? Again, no power dynamic. Remember, power dynamic. Yes. So, Paula says, Darius Rucker's from Hootie and Blowfish. Yes, that's right. I remember that. He is. That's right. That's right. He was from Hootie and the Blowfish. I'm old enough to remember that. Some of you guys are too young to remember Hootie. That was 90s? Hootie and Blowfish was 90s. Some of you guys are too young, but those of you guys with gray hair like me, you remember Hootie and the Blowfish. Absolutely. So, yes. So, that's that's an issue. Chad says, growing up with the internet, I was surprised as hell when I found out Charlie Proud was black. There we go. And look, I know we're bouncing around to this, but the point I'm trying to bring up is none of this should matter. The only difference is what, what they did say that made sense and was real. And that is, if there is a power dynamic that creates a system that keeps a marginalized group down and then a dominant group takes that culture and goes off and makes money, that's cultural appropriation. That rarely happens in America now. It does happen in other areas of the world. It does. That it does happen in other areas of the world where they have dominant cultural groups, where they have dominant governments that are authoritarian. That does happen in other parts of the world. It is very rare for that to happen in America now. It just, it's not, it's not a, a real thing. We've now taken cultural preparation to say someone did something that I don't think matches their group that I've decided they should be in. That's just you being pissed off, which you can be pissed off. But that's not cultural appropriation. I think that's my point. The last piece I'll bring up is something real fast, which you may enjoy, which is a couple people just talking about this like it's real. It'll be two seconds, but you'll get what I, what I mean by this one. The reason why I enjoyed this one, it's a relatively small group of people, but this is like what people are talking about. They're making this huge when it shouldn't be huge. The hill we all want to die on, I guess. Controversial dreadlocks are back. Hey guys, welcome back to another shared news from home. We have got to talk about Justin Bieber's new hair, but before we get into it, you see that we've got to talk about the new hair. It's a thing. Like it shouldn't be a thing, but it's a thing. And now they're talking about it. This is eight minutes in. But I almost feel like because they're friends of his and because he is who he is and you know, they know him, they love him. Maybe they have been like, I don't see the big. Now these are Justin Bieber fans. Why are they upset? And I'll go one step further. They're two white girls. Why are they upset? Like you're two white girls who like Justin Bieber. Why is this a thing? Deal. I, I don't know. Maybe it's different because they have a relationship with him. So they think he has permission or they've given him permission. But the thing is, is they aren't his only audience. This is permission again. Why in the world does anybody think 
that a group of people has to give another group of people permission to wear something, to ask them to say something? Can, can I not act away or do something until someone tells me? This goes back to earlier what I was saying. White people, you don't have to save me. It's really okay. This is, it's okay. You don't have to. John, you don't got to save me, man. I love you, man. Please keep watching. You don't have to save me. It's not required. They are not the only people who are watching and people who don't know him, they don't like it. You know, and I'm sure people who do know him don't like it either. But yeah, I'm they don't like it. Okay. Totally okay with that. You don't have to like Justin or his stuff. But why? You, why I don't hurt? get why nobody would have advised him like, so this is probably not the best idea. We should probably not revisit this. You know, remember when you yep. did it in 2016 and it wasn't a huge hit? We should not <laughs> remake that mistake. Yep. So again, I just have to circle back to the why being like, he just did it impulsively because he just wanted to because he just thinks it's a cool look. And, and everyone's telling that I got to give Justin Bieber props here. I mean, Justin Bieber... He, every, his fans are talking about it. BBC's talking about it. I'm talking about it. CNN's talking about it. Well you know, done, sure. Justin. And back in the day, like early 90s, I think that didn't get as much heat. You know, when white people sported dreadlocks, we see, we've see we seen it in like movies. Yep. We definitely know people in pop culture had rocked it. But now it's yes. like people definitely are more so willing to voice their opinions on why that. No. N they're they're willing to act like they're hurt. They weren't hurt in the nineties. They weren't hurt in the two thousands. They're not hurt now. They just know they act hurt, and they get attention. It's wrong and um, kind of explain why people shouldn't do that. So I just think you know again, listen to your audience, listen to people. If it makes them uncomfortable, if they don't like it, if they think it's wrong, change it up. Yeah, I'm. With and I just wanted to bring that piece up because that's totally the opposite of BBC. It's just two people who are talking, but wow. Like, wow. I love it. So yes, uh, let's see if I grab a couple more. Um, they aren't upset. They're virtual signings to the mob that's to come for them later. Oh, Sam. Nicely put, brother. Nicely put. You're right. And this virtual signaling makes everything worse because now everyone has to. So now if you don't virtual signal, Sam, I'm just saying, Sam, you know, come on. Why are you insensitive? Why won't you go and make a video about this and talk about how upset you are about Justin Bieber's dreadlocks? You know, are you really with the cause? Are you really one of us, Sam? You know, you got a virtual signal. Yes. Michael says white girl burden. That's actually funny. I like that. That's very good. John says, Amaz thinking about doing dreads now. <laughs> now, just because of the hate. Am I allowed to have cornrows, Larry Sharp? Oh, when I gave my edict, John, I didn't say cornrows. I just said dreadlocks, didn't I, when I was emperor of the black people? All right, I'm going to do a um, retroactive proclamation from when I was emperor of black people, as I was self declared emperor of black people. I'll do it again. You white people, if you would like to have dreadlocks and or cornrows, you may have both. The emperor of black people has spoken. Um, and I am now no, I've abdicated. I'm now no longer the emperor of black people. But now you have permission, John. Yes, you may. Absolutely. And if anyone gets mad at you, say, hey, the emperor of black people, Larry Sharp, gave me permission. So I'm good. You, you can do that if you want to. It is so insane that you that we have to even think about this, John. If you, I mean, I don't know. Cornrows are kind of cool. If you want them, enjoy. But yes, so uh, dang, I think I smacked my daughter in there somewhere. <laughs> Ryan, stop. <laughs> That's good. All right, John says, you need permission to be who you want to be now. Wow, is that sad? You're right. Be who you want to be. You know, be who you want to be. 100%. Michael says, nobody has to save anybody. Yes, we just need to stop throwing obstacles up in some people's past. 100%. That is what the LP is about. My man, Michael. Yes, my man. Yes, absolutely. So Ed said, white girls are always the saviors, which is the common trope since they do it without permission and they do it for attention, just like the mean girls from high school. Oh. 
Is it just white girls? I mean, I see where you're going with it. I mean, and you see, it's a, it's a trope on TV all the time. Movies, books, and such. Maybe. But again, not required either way, Ed. Sam says, not just now, ever since 2016. I know, Sam, forever ago. 2016? That's like Civil War times or something. Was it Revolutionary War? I don't even know. So far, yes. Adam says, to be fair, just people could fart in a crowded room and it'd be headline news because that's how deprived for entertainment we are. Um, I'm not sure about that, Adam. Right? There are so many people who are celebrities, and I'm doing air quotes, that I think a lot of them are, are struggling to get... This is really... This is a big deal for him. You know? Gwyneth says, they're talking about him. Is he coming out with a new album soon? Not... Ah, oh, there we go. Yes. 100%. Yes. Paula says, I accidentally had dreads once from a perm that went horribly wrong. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that. Michael says, I love you so much, Larry. Thank you, brother. I love you back. Adam, Larry, you should make these edict certificates for your merch shop. Oh, my God. That is a brilliant idea. Team, if you're watching, and I know you are, um, this is a really good idea. Adam, thank you. I love it. Yes, I think I may do that. Yes. So uh, Jeff says, now with Larry's permission to have cornrows, I don't have to divorce my wife for getting cornrows when we were on vacation. What a relief. Yeah, she's good. She's good. It's it's retroactive. You tell her you 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 got you got to end with the emperor of black people. You'll be fine. Absolutely. So um, blue check marks are always saying be who you want to be until someone actually goes and does it. Oh, Danny, well said. Isn't that what the blue check marks always say? You're right. It's always do you. Be who you are. Don't worry about what anybody else says. You know, don't worry about this. You can do it. Oh, you did it? Stop it. You're evil. You're racist. Oh, you did that? No, no, no. Not that. Stop it. You're evil. You're racist. It's a valid point. Absolutely. Guys, I hope this was an interesting show. I was trying to uh, give you guys which I thought was interesting again, as always. And you know what I'm going to ask you to do, as always? Head over to the censorship and free speech survey. We're talking about you being you. Censorship, free speech, being you, showing yourself. Head over to this right here, this mark right here. Click this link. Take the survey. Make my sponsors happy, theadvocates.org. Make them happy. It makes me happy. Take the survey. And once you tell people what you feel about censorship and free, free speech, you'll see what others think and exactly where you fit. And when you see where you fit, Share it. Let other people know where you fit. It's important. It keeps my sponsors happy. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to help me out, you got some cash, patreon.com slash shortway. 10 bucks a month does it goes a long way. 25 bucks a month. We have a TikTok now. We have a shortway clicks now. We actually have, if you haven't checked it out already, click the link in the description. You can check our link tree. We have podcasts. You can listen to these. You can listen to old ones if you want to or new ones or whatever. Podcasts going up, new ones every single day. Check out our podcasts so you can check it out too. That's where this money goes. And as always, like, comment, share. That is free. Please do that. Let people know what I'm doing so we can keep this show going and keep rocking and rolling. All right, guys. Thank you so much for today. Give me a little bit of your evening. I will see you all tomorrow.